Hello everyone and welcome to the live video in my new little studio. Um, okay, so a little bit different in here. Um, the sound is going to be different. Everything's going to be different. The lighting is better, I think. The sound might be a little bit echoey. Um, the one big difference in here is that I don't have a computer in front of me. So I can't see what you see. Um, and I am, I taught my family how to pin the video, how to mark his announcement. I'm not sure that's always going to get done. We'll see. So, but hopefully you guys have been doing this enough that you'll find me anyway without those steps. Um, and hopefully, yeah, it doesn't make things any um, trickier. This is the first go at it. Um, I was testing it a little bit earlier. There's some differences for me. Uh, but yeah, I like it. It's kind of nice. This is our guest bedroom and we got rid of a bed and turned it into a little art space. My son also does his drum lessons in here, so it's like an art and music studio. How cool does that sound? Good morning. Uh, it is very echoey though, I'm noticing. I don't know if you guys hear that, but I'm realizing how echoey this room is. Um, so today we're gonna do a rainy day drawing. Um, it is, uh, well, it rained here yesterday, it's sunny right now. Um, in fact, it looks really beautiful outside. But um, I, it's a really simple drawing, but I really like it. Um, this is another drawing that would be really fun to play around with as far as what you do color and what you don't color. Um, we kind of have been talking about those a bit lately. Um, but yeah, you could do this, this and just color certain things or you could color the whole thing also like always you could really add on to this make it um more background more details um whatever you like so uh let me flip this around and show you this is all again kind of new i might be playing with the camera a little bit more today than i had been oh not sure what I touched there, but. So this is our drawing. We have our girl in the rain. You can make it a boy in the rain, um, if you like. Hoping that I have the most of that on screen. Uh, the finger is okay. It, um, it doesn't hurt too much. It's actually hurting a little bit today. I think I'm, I'm a big believer that the rain and the temperature changes make things hurt. So yeah, it keeps kind of tinging today. Um, but most of the time it doesn't hurt unless I move it. Unfortunately, I have to move it three times a day. So uh, that's not fun. <laughs> Otherwise, it's okay. Um, so yeah, so this is our drawing. We have our girl behind the umbrella kind of standing in a puddle. I have rain falling down. I have some splashes kind of coming up from the puddle. Um, again, you can make any adjustments you want. Maybe you want to make yours a boy. Maybe you want to add some other details in. Um, you know, you could put her on like a pathway and put some trees, um, you can change up her outfit, whatever you see fit. I really wanted her to have some sort of rain boots. But um, like I said, this is a drawing that would be really cute to um, just color certain things. Um, like, for example, I really want yellow rain boots. So I would color these yellow and then I'd probably do the umbrella to match and then maybe leave it at that. Um, or even just coloring the umbrella is a cute option, or you can color the whole thing. When I do it today, I'm going to go ahead and color the whole thing, but I do like playing around with that idea of um, having something that uh, only has a splash of color. 
so let's figure out this camera. Is it looking good for you guys so far? I hope so. It's a little bit different for me because I have to, um, you know, I've gotten used to where the camera is positioned when I draw. And when I draw here, I'll be actually kind of holding the paper. One thing I did notice when I was drawing earlier is that um, when I erase, it makes everything, the camera's really going to shake. So sorry about that. I'll try my best. But um, to begin, we're going to start with her umbrella. So depending on how big you want her to be is where you're going to put your circle on the page and how big you want your circle. Oh, I didn't even turn the light on. Let there be stage lighting. <laughs> So I start with a full circle on, um, yeah, splash of color. Um, I start with a full, full circle with my umbrellas. I just think it makes it a little bit easier to draw. And then inside the circle, I'm going to put that tiny little, you know, the little nub in the middle of your umbrella. Some of the umbrellas have that like long stick that comes out. Some of them just have that like little button. And then I'm going to do my like pie division lines. So I'm going to do a V here. A V down here. And I'm, I'm really almost continuing this line. In fact, I'm going to move this one a little bit so it matches a little better. So it's almost like you're jumping that button to make your line. And then I'll divide this into two triangles. I'm gonna spin my paper when I do that so I'm getting it a better. And you're kind of keeping these as even as possible, but they don't have to be perfect. Right, this one, I'm going to move that just a little bit. There we go. So then I have this pinwheel. Now, umbrellas typically, though, do have, you know, that kind of curve to the ends. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of come to from this point and I'm going to curve it to this point and then curve to this point. And just making that more curved off umbrella shape. This section I'm realizing is really large, uh, but I'm going to leave it. Move that just a little bit. And I'm even coming out with these points in sometimes a little bit outside of that circle I made just to make it a little bit bigger or fix an angle if you don't like, you know, an angle you got or a shape you got. You can kind of come out. So I'm going to leave that just like so. And then what you'll do is you'll erase that circle. 
do this delicately so I don't make my camera shake all over the place. This is where it's a little different. Before, you know, the camera was set up on the desk and then the drawing board just sat on the desk, but now the camera is attached to my board. So it's real easy to get it shaken around. This one is still really weird to me. I might move that. So see, since I moved that, now I need to fix this angle there. And then fix this angle here. And then I'll erase the original. That looks a lot better to me. There's an artist that um, I was going to share with you guys, um, and if I remember, I'll do the post later. But, um, you know, I think we get really hung up on things needing to look perfect and lines looking straight and things like that. And um, if you really look at a lot of um, artists right now, you know, there's a lot of artists, one, who are making digital art. And um, their lines are so perfect. Well, first of all, the digital software they're using is doing that for them. So they are not making the straight line. The software is. I appreciate the digital artists who are keeping their irregularities, I would call that, in their drawing. And um, there's a woman um, who I really love. She does very cute stuff. She does all digital, but she keeps her irregularity. She keeps her little imperfections. So her lines aren't always straight. And I really admire that, especially in the digital world. So from um, here, I'm going to start building my person. So I'm just going to do kind of a line angling in. And it just so happens that it's kind of lining up with this section. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but it works for me right now. And I'm angling it in slightly to give her a waist. Hi, mom. So how's the lighting, you guys? Does it look good? Does it look better to you? I feel like it looks better to me. This room gets a lot of natural light, where the other room I was in just had can lights up on the ceiling. And then I'm going to curve this for the bottom of the shirt. Now we're going to have one arm that kind of just tucks into the body. Because if you imagine, you know, she has one arm really bent to hold on to the umbrella. So I'm going to have a line coming up from the side of her body. And it's going to just kind of angle out and then curve back in. So that's her elbow holding, you know, this would be her elbow, but it's, it's, you don't need to do the inner part of her elbow or you're going to make this weird skinny arm. So you're really just seeing that little bit of her elbow kind of poking out. And then on the other side, we're going to have it coming lower. So from this side, this arm's going to come down like maybe it's tucked down in her pocket or something like that. So we have one arm really bent up here and one arm not quite as bent on the other side. But the beauty of this drawing is you don't have to do any hands. Yay, no hands. It's a hand-free day. Now I wanted to give mine hair showing from the back. So what I did is I just put a little wavy line across and then I'll erase her clothing line from inside and I'll turn this into hair with, you know, some little wispy lines coming down, but I can do that all mostly in my pen.
And then she's wearing a skirt. So I'm just gonna angle out, kind of come back in, come up. I like to do the little like pleating in the skirt. You can, yeah, no hands and no face. Like how great is that? So just doing these lines that kind of build off of each other gives that skirt a pleat. Now you could do a straight skirt. You could also not do a skirt at all and put her in pants or leggings or whatever sort of outfit you want. My pencils are just all over here. I set up a little table next to my station. And then I have more in the bin that's underneath that table. There's a little bin of art supplies. Now for her legs, I want her legs to angle in. So I'm gonna do a line coming in and a line coming in but I'm gonna do a little curve for the knee. So a little tiny curve on the outside for the knee. And then just in the middle, I don't wanna do that knee curve. It, it kind of looks weird to me on the in the center too. So I'm just gonna do a straight line. And then from here, I'm doing boots. So I want, um, you know, I want the boot knee high. So I'm gonna come out with a curved line. It's coming past the knee, and then I'll bring it in at an angle. So now it looks like her leg is going down inside the boot. And then we're going to take this in It'll curve slightly and come back out. Same on this side, in. Curve slightly, come back out for the heel. And then curve this around. I put her really close to the bottom of my paper. Yes, yeah, she does have a short skirt, Mom. <laughs> and then I'll do a little boot heel on the back here. Leave it to my mom to notice the shortness of the skirt. <laughs> That's what moms do, right? Is your shirt too, is your skirt too short? In, curving out. It's kind of like an hourglass shape. Curve it around. And then do that little boot heel. And I mean, you could make her skirt longer. Now she has a longer skirt. And as far as like patterns here, you know, you could do a plaid skirt. You could, um, you could put some design element into the skirt. It's totally up to you. So since I put her really close on this bottom, I'm just going to do my little puddle line, this wavy little line kind of going off to the bottom of the page. And then I'll still do... Maybe there's even some splashes coming up by her boots. A 
little wavy water line. Like maybe she just jumped into the puddle. I know I've been watching um <laughs> I've been watching the Queen Queen's Gambit and I'm probably pulling from her clothing. And then only thing that I'm doing after this is I'm just going to add little raindrops all over the page falling from the sky. Now you, of course, can do a more elaborate background if you like. Have her on a pathway. In a tree-lined area. And now I am ready to outline. So I'm just gonna go over all of my little shapes. I'm gonna color that little button in black. Now with this umbrella, one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do the outside first. Because these insides, I guess I would call them seam lines. I don't need them to be from the button to the outer edge. So these I can just take and just kind of put them in, but they don't have to be full. Like see this one, I kind of left an opening here. This one kind of has an opening there. So just put them wherever you think they should be. There we go, like that. And then I'm gonna have a little hair. So I'm just kind of doing a rough little waves down here. And then some little lines. Um, oh, sorry, Lisa. Yeah, all of that stuff, as far as like connectivity, I'm connected the same exact way I always was. So it might just be that your signal isn't very strong right now. Because that is all the same. I'm always using my phone because I don't trust the internet here. If I used the internet, we would have videos going out all the time. Especially with the amount of kids who are using, a, you know, streaming services and stuff for school. But the video's always here later. This little corner, I'm gonna color in black. Just giving it that shadow. Oh, those doctor video appointments. Boy, have I had my fair share of those. Sometimes I love it and sometimes I hate it. I just want to go in. <laughs> and 
And then I'm going to color the sole in black, but I'm not going to color it solid. I'm actually leaving just a little bit of white. It just adds a little bit of um, kind of reflection almost look to it. Do these little splashes. This little water line. And then I put some little wavy lines inside. Maybe there's some kind of rippling off of her boot, which also just shows kind of some motion. I'm probably going to play around a little bit over the next few lives with where I'm putting this camera. I don't love it right now. It's kind of in the same spot. Um, in some ways it is easier, but in other ways it really feels like it's right in my face. I really would love to mount it up above, but so far I can't figure out a good angle for that. So don't be surprised if, you know, it looks different next time. Maybe I'll mount it off to the side or something. I don't know, we'll see. And this is where it tends to get shaky. This kind of vibrates the whole board. Try to hold it with my feet, but. <laughs> I will say it is really nice to have this art room. Um, I don't have as much distraction or I won't have as much distraction. Like if somebody comes to the door, we're not going to hear all that. Or if my son is, you know, playing games and being loud, the room I was in has an entryway on both sides of it. So I just was exposed, more, more exposed. We're back here. I'm just kind of tucked back here in this room. So it should be pretty quiet. Not a lot of interference. All right, let's get that wiped off, see how it looks. I love yellow rain boots and yellow, um, those yellow rain coats. I just love yellow. Yellow is one of those colors that just makes me happy. So I'm gonna do that in yellow. And then I think I'm gonna do her umbrella in red. Since I'm coloring the whole thing and I'm not just coloring one color, you know, like we talked about at the beginning, kind of an accent color. I'm gonna actually really color the drawing. I want a red umbrella. Definitely going to pick up a lot of texture lines from this drafting table. I can see them. I don't know if you can see them, but um, I'm 
This drafting table has seen a lot of use, and there's a lot of deep lines in it, and there's a lot of pinholes. They clearly used to pin their paper to the board. So if you have a surface that's real rough, see I have this big hole right here. <laughs> Um, you can always put another piece of paper behind it. I can't keep it in the drawing book because it's too high. I have to hold it up now. I actually have it taped. But yeah, if you don't want those weird textures... You need a smoother surface. Are you using your phone's signal too, or are you still on your Wi Fi but on your phone? So does anyone else here love a rainy day as much as I do? I really love the rain. I was very happy when it started raining yesterday. My son wanted to go get the mail with me and he was still in flip-flops. <laughs> he takes after his mom and was jumping in the puddles. I love, yeah, I really love the rain. I'm more of a winter girl. I love the, um, you know, I love being by a pool. So I love that part of summer. But I'm definitely more into winter. Just kind of going back over this. I know we need more, right? Like it could rain for weeks and weeks and weeks at this point. And do kind of an auburn hair. And how about a green sweater? I almost picture this as kind of like a school uniform.
I think I think last year though we didn't really have that much rain either this time of year, did we? Because I remember going to um, I remember going to cut our Christmas tree down right after Thanksgiving, and it rained that weekend and brought snow. But prior to that, I don't think because we were planning it and kept saying, oh, good, we really won't have that much snow to deal with. And then, um, you know, it rained right <laughs> the day before and brought a bunch of snow in. I'm just doing a gray. I'm keeping the outfit more muted. And then that bright red umbrella and those bright yellow boots. So next week, um, I've, I mentioned this before, but um, there won't be any sort of modified schedule for Thanksgiving. Um, I will be drawing on um, Monday for Patreon um, and then Wednesday and Friday in group. Um, Wednesday will definitely be a turkey drawing, um, turkey theme. And then I'm not sure exactly on Friday yet, but I think we're going to do something about being grateful. I just have to figure out how to incorporate that into a drawing, um, into a theme. But uh, we will definitely do kind of some Thanksgiving-related drawings. But if you do not celebrate Thanksgiving, you are welcome to make them, you know, however you like with whatever message. Being grateful does not have to mean that you are just focusing on Thanksgiving. We should always be grateful. Okay. Oh, sharpened the pencil, broke the pencil. And thank you, Vanessa. I thought it was kind of a cute little drawing. It's very, very simple, but, um, you know, not all drawings have to be overly complicated. Sometimes I'll come up with drawings or do a drawing and it only takes me about 10 minutes to pre-draw it and I think oh this is only going to take about 30 minutes to actually do in the class and I worry that it's too fast but then I remember when I first was going to start this I was going to make the drawings 30 minutes and somehow they ended up an hour or more and sometimes it's nice just to come and do something Quick and simple, gives you a little break. And then you can always brainstorm ways to make it a little more, a little more custom. Make these a little bit darker. Add some darkness under her feet. And there we go. You can also really take a pencil and just do little like dot. You know, you have these drop drips, but you could also do lots of little dots. I'm just putting the pencil on the paper and turning it. So turning like that. I don't know how well you can see that. But it just adds more rain detail without it having to be this like thousands of little of these droplets and then what you end up looking like is that this is the more misty rain and then the droplets are the bigger bigger pieces so I'll do this all over I 
And you could even add some of the blue onto the um, umbrella, just so it looks like some of the rain is running off. There's kind of a lot of different things you can do to like accentuate or add more detail into your drawing. So that is it for me today. So thank you very much. It was fun doing this in the new little space that I have set up. And we will be back on Friday. I will um, announce tomorrow what that drawing will be. And then I will upload um, the clean version of this so you have it as a coloring page. Don't forget to upload your drawings into the group whenever you're finished them. I love seeing what you've created. A happy drawing and I will see you guys on Friday.